way. Um, I, I've just, uh, I really enjoyed sharing this sermon series with you, and I believe that um, if you've come today hungry, if you've come today dry, if you've come today weary, if you've come today surrounded by walls and barriers, then God has got something to say to you today. Would you look at your neighbor today and say, God's got something for you today? Right now, would you say that? Look at, look at your neighbor and say, God's got something for you today. Look at him on the other side and say, God's got something for you today. Friends, we are focusing on growing our prayer life, and we have been installing prayer habits and practices for the last few weeks that will lead us to a deeper and more powerful and effective prayer life. We're believing in the book of James when God promises the prayers of a righteous person are powerful and effective. We're owning that promise. Now, the challenge for us in most of our prayer lives is we feel like our prayers are neither power or powerful nor effective, if, if we're honest, right? There are seasons where we go through and wonder how powerful our prayers really are. So two weeks ago, we... Uh, um, and, 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 involves fasting, and we invited the church to a church-wide fast, and uh, we're inviting people to the 21-day Daniel fast, but if you can't do the 21-day Daniel fast, and I'm talking to some people and saying, Pastor John, I'm ashamed, I, I couldn't finish or fulfill the 21-day Daniel fast. It's, there's no shame, friends. You, you try what you can try and see what God can do. So then there's others that are doing modified fasting. People are letting go. Someone said they're, they're fasting from dark chocolate and desserts. I love that. I, I love that, because for them, dark chocolate is a deal. Some people are focusing from social... Uh, uh, fasting from social media. Others are doing a partial fast. Some people are fasting just from lunch. Um, whatever it is, would you, would you in this season for our church be praying together for our church, praying and fasting for one another for what God might do? Um, so there's no shame. If you're doing the Daniel fast, great. If you're not, that's fine. Then find some kind of modified fast that is appropriate for your physical well-being and that's approved by your doctor especially. Uh, last week we talked about fighting, uh, fighting against the spiritual enemies on our knees in our war room, in our, in our prayer closets. And as a result of that sermon, I talked to somebody this Friday who said their husband went home, tore out a bunch of clothes in, the, in, in the, uh, their bedroom, started putting sticky notes up on the wall, prayer requests, surrounded them with scripture, and, and then created a space for her to pray privately with God and for him to pray privately with God and to go to battle in the power of prayer. So, so God is doing it through you, friends. Now, now next week, we're going to have a chance to hear from Pastor Alethea. She's going to talk about listening in prayer. What does it mean to spend time just asking God to speak and then listening for his voice? And that's coming next week. And today, friends, if you're taking notes, we're going to talk about praying through until our breakthrough praying through until our breakthrough. Because if we're honest, quite oftentimes our prayer life resembles a prayer here or a prayer there, and then we give up. Like you have something going on in your life and you're struggling in a relationship and you might lift that up once. You may lift it up twice. You may pray about that a third time. You may do that over the course of a couple of days. But within a couple of days, it's easy for us to get discouraged if we haven't heard from God. I know I'm talking to some of the right people here today. And we get discouraged and we just say, well, prayer doesn't work. That didn't work. And we stop praying. But what we don't think about is if we got the answers to our prayers every time, the first time we prayed them, just how we wanted them, then who would be God? Who would be God? We would be God. And all we would have in a relationship with God is a God of transactions, not a God of relationship, friends. He would be nothing more than a cosmic Coke machine. You, you put in a prayer, you push the button for what you want, and out comes exactly what you were hoping for. Or he becomes like a genie in a bottle, right? You rub the lamp, and, and he comes out, and you get three wishes, and you say, okay, now that I've got my three wishes, I'm done with you until the next time that I need you. But friends, you see, one of the reasons why we oftentimes have to travail in prayer and pray again and again and over over and over and come before God about things is so that we can put God in his right place and so that we can give God time to do many, many things in our life. And we're going to talk about some of those today. And so what does it mean to, to utterly and regularly come to God who desires a relationship with him, who desires for us to depend on him in the uttermost, for us to let go and to give him control of every part of our life, trusting our life, our needs, our problems, our joys, and our blessings into his hands with a belief that he's willing and able to care for all of the things of our life, where we're utterly dependent on his miraculous power to provide. And that leads us to a life of prayer that prays hard and prays long and prays through until we experience God's breakthrough. We're going to pray long and pray hard around the promises of God and trusting in his word, believing that he is the great provider and that with him all things are possible and nothing is impossible for our God. So friends, I want to talk to you about praying in the power of breakthrough praying. 
So in the power of breakthrough praying, you're going to discover three things that God's going to do in your life. And here's the first one, if you're taking notes. In the power of breakthrough praying, number one, God can do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. God can. God can do far more than we could ask or imagine. When you're praying long and you're praying hard for a season, you're giving God time to do more than you could possibly think of or fathom. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, the Bible says, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. And so God wants us to come to him and to ask of him. And when the answer takes time, as we come to God and, and ask of him to move in our life or move on the behalf of somebody else's life, it requires us to put our trust in him as he's working things out and battling behind the scenes, working breakthroughs with barriers that we had no idea even existed. And so that the outcome and the fruit of it is well beyond what we had in mind and well beyond what we were even capable of praying for. And that's exactly what happened for Daniel. You see, Daniel was the foundation of the fasting that we began two weeks ago, two Sundays ago. I think this is day 10 if you're still on the 21-day fasting plan. And Daniel is a guy who is praying his guts out. He's fasting and he's praying. He's praying hard. He's praying long. And he's praying through for 21 days, just desperate for God to move with his people of Israel and for the city of Jerusalem that, that now lies in ruin. God, give me wisdom. Give me direction for a time yet to come for me to lead these people. And it isn't until the 21st day that he actually hears from God. He's praying and fasting three times a day, and, and it's 21 days before he even hears from God. And so on the 21st day, here's the angel that shows up in Daniel chapter 10, verse 12 to 14. And, and, uh, and here's uh, the interaction that the angel has with Daniel. It says, Do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourselves before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to them. Friends, if you've been praying and praying and praying and not getting any answers or even any response from God, God would have you know that your prayers have been answered since the very first day. I'm sorry, your prayers have been heard since the very first day. Now, interestingly enough here, it gives us the, the, it gives us the hallmark of a fast. He says, since the very first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God. This is what we do when we pray and fast, friends. We're setting our mind to gain a new understanding that, that only God can deliver through sacrificial fasting. Humbling ourselves before God saying, I, I, listen, I'm going to give up this because I need more of you. And, and my hunger for you to deliver is greater than my hunger to fill my belly with food or social media or chocolate or whatever it might be, friends. He says, I have come in response to those words that you prayed. Verse 13, but the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Daniel's like, hmm, I didn't know that. That's pretty interesting. Okay. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. Daniel's kind of like, oh, I can see why that might take you some time. I, I can see why that might take 21 days in order to be able to accomplish some of that. I had no idea that was going on in the background. Verse 14, now I have come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future, for the vision concerns a time yet to come. Friends, for 21 days, Daniel was praying to God. He was praying for Jerusalem and for the brokenness of his people, crying out three times a day, fasting and praying. And, and other pieces of scripture, it says he was in sackcloth and ashes. He was mourning. He was laboring and travailing. He was weeping in prayer. And he had no answer. For 21 days, he didn't hear from God. But 21 days later, God breaks through and says, I heard you from the very first second you began to pray. And I'm in the process of doing far more than you could ever possibly ask because you had no idea what kind of battle I had to go through for you and for the people of Israel. I've been battling against the darkness of, of the spiritual enemy behind the scenes. I've been working to make a way to break through barriers you had no idea of. And now I'm here. And now... I'm here. And so friends, some of you are fasting like Daniel. Some of you are praying hard for God's breakthrough in and, and, and whatever way, shape, or form, and you haven't been seeing the answers. And what you should know is, is that God is working behind the scenes, battling and doing for you what he did for Daniel. He's battling far more than what you could ask or even possibly fathom or imagine. Now, if you think about it for a second, what would it have looked like if Daniel would have given up praying on day 20? You know, day 14. Some of us can't get past day 5, right, sometimes? But for Daniel, he kept praying and praying. But what if he got discouraged on day 20 and decided to give up praying? Friends, he would have been one day and one prayer short of God delivering 
his miracle breakthrough into his life. And so friends, breakthrough praying is praying long and praying through and praying hard for an entire season until God answers. It's the belief that God is not aloof and, and that God is not ignoring our prayers, but that in fact God is working and battling behind the scenes in ways and things that we can't fathom, but God has shown to us in the person and work of Daniel. God has pulled the curtain back on what he does, how he goes into action for us when we pray in the example of Daniel. So friends, here's the message for today. It's real simple. Don't stop praying. Don't ever stop praying because God is about to deliver something for you in your life or for the person you're praying for. So friends, in the power of breakthrough praying, God can do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. And in the power of breakthrough praying, number two, God can do a work in you. God can do a work in you in the power of breakthrough praying. I want to pause there for a second because I want to get back to this point of never stop praying. You know, back in November, we um, invited you, the prayer team invited you to a breakthrough prayer initiative for our entire church. And that breakthrough prayer initiative, we'll put that up on the screen, our breakthrough prayer is based on Matthew 5, 14 to 16. It says, for you are the light of the world. A, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. It says, neither do we light a lamp and put it under a bushel. But no, we put it on display for all people to see so that people basically can give glory to God. Now, friends, we've invited you to pray that prayer um, uh, at 5.16 a.m. and 5.16 p.m. every day since that day. And guess what? Nobody has said stop. But here's what I already know. I already know some of us have already stopped. Right? I, I already know that from the very first day, and we've given you multiple ways, we put it up on the screen, we've handed cards out. You have those cards, or you can get access to another card that some of you never even picked up the prayer and have seriously prayed to God to ask him to move in powerful ways, I want to I challenge us as a congregation to pick that back up or to start it for the very first time. There are prayer cards out there, and I want us to pray this prayer right now and, 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 and pray like Daniel when we're praying this prayer, believing God is going to do something huge. Let's pray this prayer together. God, awaken the people of Rolling Plains Church to break through into a new season of fruitfulness. Forgive us of our sins and fill us with a hunger for your word. Give us the courage to step out of the darkness of fear and let your light shine. Show us the favor of your great light so that your glory would shine through us as a beacon of love and hope to a broken and hurting world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, if you dropped off on praying that, no shame. Friends, no shame at all. Don't even need to hear from you. But would you pick it back up? Would you pick that prayer back up? Because we're not done praying it yet because God's not done blessing us yet. Amen? We're not done praying that yet because we're not done receiving all the fruit that God wants to deliver into us. Amen? We're not done praying that because we know that we're not done asking God to cleanse us from all of our sins. And we know we're not hungry enough for God's word just yet. Amen? We're not done with that prayer yet because we know that there's more of the light of Jesus Christ to the people of Rolling Plains Church that still needs to be shown into our community and world. Amen? So don't stop praying. Would you pick that prayer back up and keep praying it? Praying hard and praying long and praying through. And we're seeing God's breakthroughs, but God's not done yet. And we want to continue to pray that breakthrough prayer. So secondly, God can do a work in you. You see, in the power of breakthrough praying, God can do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. That prayer is asking God to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. And secondly, God can do a work in you. When we commit to praying daily and crying out and travailing in prayer for a period of time, believing God to do something, when, when we're praying for God to do something in the midst of that, He's going to do something in us. He's going to grow our intimacy. He's going to grow our dependency. He's going to grow our faith in Him. And it's going to build in us a strengthening. It's going to strengthening, uh, strengthen us and it's going to build courage in us as we wait to trust him to move with his miracle provision. This is what happened in the book of 1 Kings in the Bible. The Israelites were following idols and worshiping idols like Baal. And as a result of it, God was ticked off and he brought a drought that lasted three and a half years. And Elijah the prophet comes on the scene and after a supernatural showdown with the prophets of Baal, begins to pray and believe that God is ready to deliver rain to the dry and weary land. And so in doing so, he gets himself into a posture of prayer and breakthrough praying. Watch in 1 Kings chapter 18. Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. Go and look toward the sea, he told his servant, and he went up and looked. There is nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. 
The sky drew, drew black with clouds and the wind rose. A heavy rain started falling. And in verse 46, the power of the Lord came on Elijah. Seven times, friends, Elijah sends his servant to look for God's miracle provision, and six times he comes back empty-handed. It's only on the seventh trip up the mountain that God's breakthrough comes in a small sign of a cloud the size of a, hands, a man's hand. And it's during this time of faithful praying, hard and praying long and praying through, that God's working to do something for him and to provide water for the land, but also to do something in him. For you see, praying moves the heart of God, but it also grows Elijah. The Bible says that the power of the Lord came on Elijah as a result of this breakthrough praying, as a result of not giving up and sending his servant seven different times to go see what he believed God wanted to do as he was having his hand between his knees, his head between his knees, praying to God. But you see, God was preparing for a coming season for him. God was strengthening him. A coming season of running and hiding for his very life from from Jezebel and other people that were trying to destroy all of God's prophets in this difficult time of scriptures. You see, if he would have quit on the sixth trip, he would have been one prayer short of his miracle, and God would not be able to complete the work of strengthening that he wanted to do in him to prepare him for a season that he had no idea was coming. And so this breakthrough prayer was not only moving the heart of God, but it was strengthening him as he trusted more in how God was going to provide. So when we pray long and we pray hard and we pray through until the answer comes, it fills us with a power and a courage to face future challenges. So friends, keep praying through until God's breakthrough. Keep praying through until God's breakthrough. He's going to do a work for you, but he's also wanting to finish a work of strengthening in you work of strengthening in you. That's what happens when we pray breakthrough prayers. And so in the power of breakthrough praying, number three, God will also fulfill his promises in and through you, if you're taking notes. God will, can and will fulfill his promises in and through you. For 40 years, the children of Israel were wandering in the wilderness and wandering in the desert when they were released from Pharaoh's grasp and, and the, they, parted the red, they parted the Red Seas and, and, uh, and they were wandering and, and struggling in, in the darkness and of doubt and it was a difficult struggle for them in those 40 years in the wilderness but they all along the way were believing God to deliver on his promise right? This is what breakthrough praying is we're praying around God's promises until God delivers on his promises well friends they were going to the what land? The promised land. They were going to the promised land. And so they were believing that God was going to deliver them. For 40 years, God didn't answer on that promise. God didn't deliver. And now they're on the edge of entering into the promised land. And Joshua enters on the scene. And here's what, what God has to say to Joshua. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. So friends, watch this now. In the way of God's promise, in the way of God's promised land to these children of Israel who've been living it for 40 years is a barrier. Now that barrier is, is, is very uh, um, simple and, and, and very easy to identify. It's a fortress. It's a city. It's called Jericho. And in this city of Jericho, it's a fortified city with stone walls that in, in the, small, the lowest places, the walls are 13 feet high. And in the tallest places, the walls are 28 feet high. And that city is waiting for them. Now the city is waiting for them, the, the moat is full of crocodiles, and the drawbridge is up, and the guys are standing up there on the paramount with, with bows and arrows, with, uh, and, and with flames on the end of them, they're ready to go, they're ready for battle and to repel God's armies, friends. Clearly, they are in need of a breakthrough as they stand in the face of this barrier to God's promise. So friends, how about you? Do you know barriers in your life? Have you experienced walls in your life? Maybe you have this barrier of finances in your life that you believe is keeping you from God's promise. Maybe your barrier is the furnace that blew up last week and, 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 and you're just trusting God for it. Maybe you have a barrier in a relationship right now or at work or in your attitude about your self-image or maybe you have a health barrier in your life right now that's keeping you from God's promises. There's a wall right in front of you and it seems high and it seems impassable just like the city of Jericho did. Or maybe it's not just impassable, it may feel impossible. Well, friends, I know a guy. You ever have somebody say, I know a guy, right? I know a God who is able to do the impossible. How about you? How about you? So friends, we are praying for God to do a brand new thing in our life to help us from these walls that seem impassable. 
And Joshua was praying, and he hears from God, and he's strengthened and encouraged as a result of it, just like God strengthened and encouraged Elijah during his time of prayer. And he's strengthening him for the battle and the barrier ahead, this fortification called Jericho. And in doing so, he reminds Joshua of the battle, that the battle is not won with weapons of this world or swords or spears, but by the power of breakthrough praying and believing and claiming the promises everywhere we set our feet, God will deliver into their hands. Joshua 1.3, everywhere you set your feet, I'm delivering into your hands. God promised Joshua. And they're owning that in prayer, and they're praying hard around God's promise. And so let me talk to you about the power of prayer walking to assist you in your prayer life. The power of prayer walking. So Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men and do this for six days. Have seven priests carrying trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout, and then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up, every one straight in. And so friends, as you read further, Israel did exactly just that. Now, it must have looked really foolish walking around the city in circles. And can you see and picture what the soldiers of Jericho were probably thinking and doing? There's probably some mockery going on and saying, hey, you know, get a load of these guys. That's the worst battle plan I've ever seen in my entire life. And at some point in time, the, the Israelite soldiers probably on day three or four said, who's in charge of this army? This is the most silly and ridiculous battle plan that you could ever possibly have to take a fortification. But what do you think it was that they were doing, the majority of them doing, when they were walking around this city for 13 straight times on seven straight days? They were prayer walking, friends. They were owning the promises of God. Everywhere you set your foot, I'm delivering into your hands. They were praying and they were walking. They were walking and they were praying and they were setting feet on, on the very ground that they believed God wanted to deliver into their hands. They were claiming the promises of God that every place they were going to set their feet, God was going to deliver into their hands. And it was a promise that only could be claimed through praying, through breakthrough praying. And eventually, friends, on that 13th time, on the seventh day, the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. So friends, maybe you're in a battle and the battle is in your marriage or maybe you're in a battle with a child raising children and maybe you're in a battle with your car and you're tired of your broke down car or maybe you're in a battle at school or maybe you're in a battle at work or you're, you're, you're in a battle believing God to do something new for our church. And so God would say, start praying and start prayer walking. Start walking and praying and praying and walking and claiming the promises of God daily to pray hard and to pray long for his breakthrough until the wall and the barrier comes down. So friends, you're fighting for your marriage right now. Don't fight in marriage, fight for your marriage. So maybe it's time to start prayer walking your property. Years ago, we had somebody that was battling some uh, issues in their home, and the church showed up, and we prayer walked their property, friends. So if you're battling in a relationship at home, prayer walk your house. If you've got bullying issues with one of your children at school, go prayer walk the school. Make sure you notify them first that you're going to be walking the grounds of the school, all right? And make sure you get your Bible in hand. But if you're struggling at work, go walk, your, go walk your place of work and pray. Praying, quoting scripture, telling the enemy he has no place in your life, that he's defeated. You're walking in the victory of Jesus Christ and his authority and his power according to promises of God's word. And your neighbor, yes, your teachers, yes, your coworkers and friends may think you're foolish, just like the soldiers in Jericho. But who cares? You're not fighting with spears or swords, but with the very power of God through the power of prayer. And you're not going to stop until the promises of God break through the walls that need to come down in your life. And so friends, think about this. If Israel stopped on day six, they would have missed God's miracle. If Israel would have stopped on day six, they would have missed God's miracle. So here's the last thought for the day. Friends, if you're taking notes, don't stop one prayer short of your miracle. Don't stop one prayer short of your miracle. Keep living, keep praying, keep believing in the power of God's promises, that his promises still stand, that the city is going to be delivered, that your marriage is going to grow, that the bullying is going to stop, that your dad's cancer is going to be healed, that your son is going to return home safe, that the increase is going to come, that the walls are going to come down, friends. Seek God, cry out to God, travail in prayer, blood, sweat, and tears kind of praying with the strength and the courage that only the God can give you where you're grabbing a hold of the horns of the altar and not letting go until the answer comes. You're praying through until God's breakthrough. So friends, are you desperate for God to move? Have you been praying and not seeing results? 
Keep fasting. Keep praying for 21 days until God shows up and delivers. Keep climbing the mountain seven times until the rains come. Circle the stronghold until the walls come down. Keep prayer walking, friends. Get into your war room and your prayer closet and don't come out until you hear from God. He's battling and doing more than you can see. And he's filling us and strengthening us all at the same time with courage and strength. So keep praying around the promises of God, friends, to deliver. We're praying through until God's breakthrough. We're going to pray long, we're going to pray hard, and we're going to pray through. Action steps and we're done. Number one, pray through a need until your breakthrough. Friends, what would it look like if, if we grabbed the hold of our breakthrough prayer for our church and everybody in this church committed in the next 21 days, the next three weeks, to come once a week, three times, and to, and to prayer walk the halls of this church, to prayer walk and to touch every seat in this sanctuary and pray over these seats, to prayer walk our platform, to prayer walk our children's ministry area and our youth ministry area, to prayer walk our offices, and to just cry out to God for God to move. And all the while we have our breakthrough prayer card in front of us or on our minds. We're praying whatever it is that God puts on our hearts and our spirits. What could that look like? What could God do when we decide to own Joshua 1.3 and say every place we set our feet, God is delivering into our hands? Number two, believe his promise that it is delivered. Believe his promise when you pray that it is already delivered. Remember when he was standing in front of the, of the fort with jo uh, Joshua and he says, Hey, Joshua, guess what? Uh, I've already delivered the city of Jericho into your hands. Uh, can you see it? And Joshua was like, uh, No, the walls are still tall, the gates are shut, and we haven't taken it yet. With friends, what God is saying is believe as if his promise has already been delivered. Three, um, th number three is prayer walk our church once a week. Um, and we already talked about that. Um, number four, keep doing the breakthrough prayer, prayer thing. I've already talked to you about that. And then the fifth and final thing that's a, an, an extra one, uh, you received hopefully a five-day prayer journal, uh, prayer experience on your way in. It's very simple. It's guided and led. It has five daily devotions in it for Monday through Friday this week. I want to invite you to take that home. If you didn't get it, we'll be handing one out per family tonight at the Breakthrough Prayer Movie Night. And we'd love to have you come and be a part of that. Holy God, in the power of your Holy Spirit, would you come and do a fresh thing and a brand new thing? Lord God, would you put us on our knees as a church, praying for the future of what you're calling us to do and be in our community? And Lord God, would you continue to strengthen each and every one of us through the power of breakthrough praying? Lord God, would you help us to realize that in our breakthrough prayers, Lord God, you may be doing far more than we could ever fathom, ask, or imagine, and that's why it's going to take some time to continue to pray. Or maybe there's a work that you want to do in us, and it's going to take longer than a three- or four-day prayer session with you. Or, God, maybe perhaps you just want to work through us and you're waiting for us to put feet to the ground in our belief of your promises. And, Lord, we're going to do that. Lord, touch our hearts. Change our hearts. Call us to repentance. Call us to a fresh invitation of you in our life to do a brand new thing. We give you this church, God. This is your church. Have your way with us. Amen. So your five-day journal, I think they'll actually be handing out to you when you walk out. So if you didn't get it, don't panic. There will be people.